praise you to the most high. So tonight's topic is called prepare for temptation. That's tonight's topic. Prepare for temptation. All right. Okay, let's open up with the book of Ecclesiastes. Let's jump right into it. Track two, verse one. Let's start there. Ecclesiastes chapter two, verse one. Come on. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So now this is a commandment. It says, my son, if thou come to, to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Because all of us in here, we say we're coming to serve the Lord. We say, listen, I'm an Israelite. I must do what the Bible says. I understand what he's done. And now in our genome of repentance, we must come to serve the Lord according to as it is written. And that's not an easy job. All of us in here, we're here to serve the Lord and to do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Okay? Watch this. Um, give me that in um, give me that in Isaiah. Okay? Give me Isaiah 42 real quick. Isaiah 42 verse 21. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 21. Let's read that. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 21. Come on. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 21. Come on. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Great. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. You see that part right there? It says the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. So the only way we're going to come to serve the Lord and please the Lord, we must do his righteousness because that's what he did. When he walked the earth, that's the example that he left behind for us. Read that again. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 21. Go ahead. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Mm -hmm. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. The Lord magnified the law and he made it honorable. He made God's commandments honorable. So we want to serve the Lord. We must please him for his righteousness sake. Okay. So go back to chapter 2, verse 1 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1. Read. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, come prepare on. thy soul for temptation. He says we must prepare our soul for temptation. This is a commandment right here. Each and every one of us who are here to serve the Lord. But when we serve the Lord, because we come in to serve the Lord, the most that God is commanding us is we must prepare our souls for temptation. Because you are going to be tempted in this truth. There's going to be many temptations that will surround you. There's going to be many temptations that will try you. To try to what to fall and fall back into sin. Watch this. Give me Joshua 24, verse 14. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. All day, every day, we are tried. You understand? We are tempted. Okay. Joshua 24, verse 14. Read that. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Come on. Now, therefore, fear the Lord mm -hmm. and serve him in sincerity and in truth. We must do what? Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. So now it says we must fear the Lord. We must fear the Lord. He's telling us how we must fear the Lord by serving him in sincerity and in truth. That's how we fear the Lord. We serve him in sincerity and in truth. Remember what Sarah says. If you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So how do we serve the Lord? We serve him in sincerity and in truth. Give me that in Psalms 119 verse 142. Let's see what it means to serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth. In truth. Read that. Psalms 119 verse 142. Come on. Psalms chapter 119 verse 142. Read. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Mm -hmm. And thy law is the truth. You see that thing? The laws of God are the truth. God's commandments, it is the truth. So go back to where was that? Joshua 24, verse 14. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. So it says we must serve him in sincerity and in truth. All of us were coming to serve the Lord, but the most that God is giving us a blueprint on how to serve him in sincerity and in truth. Meaning what? We must be sincere. We must be faithful to the Lord. You understand? We must be loyal to the Most High. 
does the sincerity. It says, and in truth, meaning according to the law. The only way we're going to serve the Lord, we must serve him according to the guidelines he gave us, which is his commandment. The minute we go outside of the guidelines he gave us, which is sincerity and truth, which is the law, we are no longer serving the most high God. He's serving Satan through our lust. Okay, read that again. Verse 14. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Okay. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and mm -hmm. serve him in sincerity and in truth. Come on. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. You see that thing where he's saying? It says what? It says put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. Because guess what? When we were in Egypt, we were worshiping other gods in Egypt. So now he's saying, listen, if you want to serve the Lord, you must stay away from the worshiping the gods of these other nations. Because the gods of these other nations, they come with what? Sin. They come with diverse lusts and pleasures. You understand? So when you, when you serve other gods, you're not serving the Lord. You understand? We are not serving the Lord when we serve other gods. Because other gods, they give us license to indulge in our lust. You understand? So the most High God is telling us, listen, you come to serve me, you have to prepare yourself. But before you prepare yourself, you must know the way to serve me. You must serve me in sincerity and in truth, meaning according to my law. You understand? And when we do that, that's us doing what? We are preparing our soul for temptation. We're preparing to be tempted. We're preparing to be tried. When we serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth, we're keeping his commandments. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. 1 Corinthians. It says we must serve him in sincerity and in truth. You understand? Thereby doing what? Preparing our souls for temptation. Watch this. This is how you prepare yourself for temptation because the temptation is the trial. Everybody has different trials and everybody knows what their vice is. You, everybody knows what, what your problem is. You all know your vice might not be another brother's vice or another sister, but you know what you're dealing with. The problem is, are you honest enough to say, this is my problem right here? Because some of you, you don't want to admit that. You don't want to admit, this is my vice. I'm struggling with this, and so on and so forth. You understand? But me, all, my job is to bring it out because I, I'm also dealing with my own stuff. Don't get it twisted. But you must be, you must know you. The most I brought you in this truth, that's why it says, examine yourself. Give me that in 2 Corinthians 15, verse 18, uh, verse 5. 2 Corinthians 18, verse 5. The only way to prepare yourself for temptation, you must examine yourself. Okay, read it. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Let's get that real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Go ahead. Examine yourselves. Mm -hmm. Whether ye be in the faith. You see what the Bible is saying? Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Examine. Meaning sit down and take account of the things that you know you're struggling with. You understand? The old man, the old woman. You Only you know what you're dealing with. Only you know what makes you weak. Only you know the thing that brings you into sin. You all, you, everybody knows that. You understand? The question is, are you going to be honest enough about it to say, listen, this is my issue right here. Let me deal with it. Where can I go in the Bible to find the remedy for this thing? You understand? That's why the Lord says, examine yourself. Okay, so give me that in First Corinthians 15, verse 31. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. Go ahead. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm -hmm. I die daily. You see that thing? It says, I die daily. I protest by, my, by your rejoicing, which, is, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. We must rejoice because Christ gave us what? He gave us the spirit of grace for us to get our minds right. So we must rejoice in that because that's a, that's a medicine. That's a way out. Repentance is the way out. But it says, I die daily. So that means whatever it is that you're dealing with, your fight is a daily thing. Every day, you have to fight this thing. 
Meaning what? The old man must be buried on a daily basis. The old woman must be buried on a daily basis. You understand? That's why it says, I die daily. Read that again. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. Come on. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. I die daily. Why is he saying this? Hold this. Give me the book of Job. Give me Job chapter 7. Okay. Job chapter 7. Read verse, read verse 18. Watch this. Job 7 verse 18. Job chapter 7 verse 18. Come on. And that thou shouldest visit him every morning mm -hmm. and try him every moment. You see what the Lord does? The Lord visits you in the morning he says, and he tries you every moment. Because in the in at night you're sleeping. You understand? And at night he also does visit you. He sends you, he seals instructions in your head and all that, in your spirit, in your mind. But what he's saying here says, and that thou shouldest visit him every morning and try him every moment. The Lord tries you every moment. That's why it is that's why the apostle Paul said what he said. Read that again, first Corinthians 15, verse 31. In first Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. Come on. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. You see that thing? I die daily. Okay, read that verse again. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. Go ahead. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. I die daily. So the old man, the old woman must be buried on a daily basis. You understand? That's because why? The most high God says, I try, you are trying every moment of your day. Every moment of your life, you are trying. The Lord is trying. You understand? So that's why it's important to die daily. But the only way you can die daily, you must know what your issues are. You must examine. You must know what's evil for you. And you deal with it. You go into the scriptures to find out where to go in order for me to combat this spirit. You understand? To keep the spirit in check. That's, your, that's all our job. On a daily basis, that's what the most of God is commanding us to do. You understand? Now watch this. Give me the book of Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Luke 9, verse 23. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Go ahead. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. You see what this guy is speaking? He says, if any man come, will come after me. You know what that means? Hold that. Go back to Sirach 2 verse 1. I'm going to show you what Christ is saying. He's saying the same thing that Sirach is saying. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. You come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Go back to Luke 9 verse 23 again. Luke chapter 9 verse 23. Mm -hmm. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So you see that part, if any man will come after me, if you come to serve the law, he's saying the same thing. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That part right there when he says to deny yourself, to deny yourself, to deny yourself means you what? You die daily. That's what it means to deny yourself. You die daily. You bury the old man on a daily basis because this man, the new man, the spiritual man, is tried every moment. You understand? With temptation. So how you fight? You fight with the laws of God because you know you are tried every day, every moment of your day. You understand? So you must deny yourself. Deny your flesh. You understand? You have to deny your flesh from indulging in the lust thereof. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 10, verse 38. Matthew 10, verse 38. It says, if any man will come up to me, let him deny himself. I want to deal with that part. Let him deny himself. Watch this. Read that. Matthew 10, verse 38. Matthew chapter 10, verse 38. Come on. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. You see what he's saying? If he says, he says, if you don't take your cross and follow after him, he says, you're not worthy of me. 
So to take up your cross, that's you denying yourself. I'm going to explain what the cross is going into. It's not talking about you carrying your cross on your neck. No, he's not talking about that. He says what? Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Let's see what the what, when, when it goes into, when he says you must take up your cross. Jump up to verse 34. We're going to start there. Then we're going to read down. Matthew 10, verse 34. Read that. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Come on. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Mm -hmm. I came not to send peace, but a sword. You see what Christ is saying? He says, don't think I'm coming to send peace on earth. I'm not coming to send peace, but a sword. This sword right here, you understand? It's talking about the word of God. The sword is the Bible. The Lord says, I'm coming to say, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not bringing peace, but I'm bringing a sword. The sword is the Bible. Watch this. Give me that in Hebrews 4. Okay. Hebrews chapter 4 is 12. Okay. Because that verse is twofold. But guess what? He's also talking about this right here. Hebrews chapter 4. Read verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Come on. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And what? And sharper than any two-edged sword. He says, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So the sword that the Lord says he's going to bring is the word of God. That's the sword. Go ahead. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. This sword right here, guess what? It says it will divide asunder soul and spirit. That's the sword right here. The Bible. The Bible will divide asunder soul and spirit. Come on. And of the joints and marrow. Mm -hmm. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the word of God will discern your intents, your intentions, the agenda, you understand, your anger. The word of God will discern that thing. If you are and if you're a man or woman of God, you will humble down and say, you know what? I'm not moving in the right spirit here. Let me humble down, let me repent and get my mind right. You understand? So go back to Matthew 10. Read verse 34 again. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Read. Right. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Mm -hmm. I came not to send peace, but a sword. You see that thing? It says, I came not to send peace, but a sword. The Holy Bible that descends between what? The sword. It says what? It says, verse 12. I'm paraphrasing it. It says, it's the, it's the divide asunder soul and spirit. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Watch this. Go ahead. Remember it says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Go ahead. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Stop right there. It says, because the word for means because, it says, for I am come to set a man at variance against his father. So guess what the sword is? The sword, which is the Bible, guess what the Bible says it will do? what the most I said it will do. It says it will set at variance, meaning at odds, against a, what? a man against his father. Meaning what? The, the people that, these are the people that you have to deal with in this truth. is giving you a list of them. So these people, they go into what? You denying yourself. You understand? You taking up your cross daily and following Christ. Because guess what? The cross that he's talking about, is talking about what? Your trials. Because why? And your trials and your temptations are going to come from the people that know you. That's what he's saying. It's going to come from people that know you. That's why he says, you understand? He said, we're going to set the man at variance against his father. You understand? Your, 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 worldly, your worldly father in the world. You understand? They might say, you know what? Yeah, I don't like this thing that you are into. Okay? You used to do this. Now you're longer doing that. You understand? They'll criticize you. They'll speak evil of you. These are the people that you have to deal with because those, those, these are people that are close to you. They know you. Now you are putting on the new man who repent you, getting your mind right. Guess what? These are the people that you now have to what? You have to sacrifice. You have to what? You have to detach from. Spiritual. Okay, come on. And the daughter against her mother. You see that thing? The daughter against her mother. Where you find that as a, as a sister, now your mother is having a problem with you because you're now keeping the commandments of the Lord. You're wearing long dresses now. You put on head covering. You don't cook on the Sabbath, so on and so forth. 
What's going on? That's what he's talking about. You understand? Because if they, your, your love for them must not supersede the love for the most high God that you're not keeping, you don't keep the laws of God. You understand? Their love must not supersede you loving the Father by keeping his laws. That's what he's saying. And these are people closest to you that know you. Your mother is, you understand? Your mother, your father, go ahead. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Because the daughter-in-law, the mother-in-law might say, listen, um, you might have a problem with your mother-in-law. And the problem could be, no, it could be because um, you as a, as a daughter-in-law, you, um, you dress a certain way. You address your husband a certain way, so on and so forth. She might not like that. Why are you calling him Lord? What the hell? But it's biblical. You understand? She might have a problem with that. You understand? Or no, but why are you calling him that? She might be offended by that. That's why he says, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So the word of God, that's what's going to bring division between you, between the people that know you, the people that are closest to you, the people that knew, knew you from a young age. They see you growing up right before their eyes. Go ahead. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. You see, he's giving you levels. He says, a man's enemy shall be they of his own household. The people that are going to be, he says, your enemies will come from your house. You understand? A man's enemy shall be they of his own household. That could be your wife, your husband, your children. You understand? That the Lord is telling you, says, opposition is not going to come from really far. Opposition will come from the people around you, the people in your house. That's where the war begins in your house. Because now you need to use the word of God to set things in order. Then what happens is that your wife will fight you, your husband will fight you, your children will fight you. Why? Because now you're taking away the, 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 the idols that they worship. You understand? Go ahead. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. You see what he's saying? Read that verse again, verse 37. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. Read. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. You see that thing? He says, you love your father or your mother more than me. He says, you're not worthy of me. Because your fathers and mothers, many, many of you know, your mothers in the world, your fathers in the world, they don't want you to be doing what this Bible says. You understand? So now it says, you listen to your mother more that, that hates this book because no, but she's my mother, but your mother hates the Bible. She hates the things that are written in it. Your father hates the Bible. He hates the things that are written in it. The Lord says, you love them more than you love me. You're not afraid of me. You understand? Go ahead. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You see that thing? You love your children more than you love the most like God. The Lord says you are not worthy of it. You understand? Because guess what? Your children are going to, the children, they grow. One day, one of them might decide, you know what? Me, I don't really think I want to do that Bible stuff. Guess what? To hell with you and drop dead. That's the answer. Why? Because now you're going to follow your son or your daughter around. Because now they, don't want, they, don't, they no longer want to obey and do what this Bible says no more. No, those are casualties of war. That's what's going to happen. Why? Because you know that the most high God is saying, if you love your children more than me, you're not worthy. You love your wife, your husband, your father, your mother more than me, you're not worthy of me. That's you're going into taking up your cross daily. It's not talking about you having a cross on your neck. No, it's talking about you having to deal with the people in your life that are closest to you that now you have to cut off you understand? Or deal with them at a distance because why? You want to obey the laws of God and serve the Lord in sincerity and truth. You must be willing to what? To cut them off if they are offending you. In what? Hindering you in keeping God's commandments. That's what the Lord is saying, baby. You understand? Read again. Matthew chapter 10 verse 37. Mm -hmm. He that loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Read. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You see that? Read. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. 
So the cross that you must take, that's what? That's your child. That's your temptation that you now have to deal with. You understand? Because your cross goes into what? You dealing with your child. And your cross represents the people that we are in. You are in. just read about you. your mother, your father, your, your, your son, your daughter, your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, which is still your parent. If you understand? So he says, he that, he says, and he that taketh not his cross and follow that to me is not worthy of me. So that means that you need to understand that that cross right there is making reference to all these people that we just mentioned. You understand? But watch this. Now, Christ is going to take it a step further because you have to deny yourself and take up your cross daily and follow him. But you, the war will begin with what? You begin in your house, he's saying. The war will begin with the people that know you, that goes for your mother, your father, your aunties, your uncles, your children, your wife, your husband. Okay, give me that in Luke 14, verse 26. Watch this. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Go ahead. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and mm. sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, that's a heavy one right there because Luke is saying the same thing, but Luke is giving you more details. But watch this. Read that verse again, slow for me. Come on. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Mm -hmm. If any man come to me and hate not his father. Stop right there. So it says, if any man come to me and hate not his father. Does it mean, what is he talking about? Because your father will come with philosophy. You understand? Your father will, will can hinder you in this truth. You understand? You understand? And say, no, you're in a cult. You understand? So they mock you and so forth. So it says, and hate not his father. That goes into taking up your cross. Taking up your cross goes into you, you understand, hating your father in the, in the sense of not hating your father to say, I hate you and all that. No, it's talking about what they want to bring into this truth to hinder you. You understand? So you have to cut them off. Right? And mother. And mother. And Because women, they are the ones that come with philosophies as well especially them more than the men. Go ahead. And wife. And wife. Remember, these are the people that are closest to you. He's saying, and wife. Because your wife might say to it, hell to the north, to hell with that. I don't want to do what this Bible says. The most that God is telling you here, Christ saying, listen, if you not hate them by because they want, they, be, they want to become a hindrance to this truth, the Lord says, you're not worthy of me. You cannot be his disciple. Because your wife might say, me, you want to do this? Okay, I'm leaving. Okay, bye. That's the spirit, that's the, that's the type of spirit you have to have. You understand? Go ahead. And children. And children, your sons and your daughters. Because they might say, listen, when they grow up, I don't longer want to keep this law. I don't want to do what this Bible says. The law says you have to cut them off until they get their minds right. Once they, if they want, they want to repent and all that, then they can repent. Okay, come on. And brethren, sister. Right and what? And brethren. And brethren. Now this goes into brothers in the church. He says, and brethren. And brethren. Because guess what? This goes into what? Friendship. That friendship thing, listen, it falls into the under this category right here. You come with a brother in the you come in, in into the truth. You you've been you've been so-called friends in the world. You come into the truth. Guess what? Your brother goes the hell off. You don't check it, okay? Because you have that friendship. That's what he's talking about when he says, and that. Because they can influence you for, your, for you not to keep the laws of God. They can influence you for you to do what? To go against the order. You say, I'm going to do whatever I, the hell I want. I'm not going to listen to leadership when they give me instructions. I'm going to be rebellious. And guess what? He also is looking at you and say, okay, so you, the both of you, you influence one another. Dumb as hell. And I've seen it. Some of you have corrected you about this thing. You understand? Because you just, Bancho, you still have that nigger mindset with fringes and a bottle of blue. So that's why it's talking about the and brethren, and brethren, and brethren. Because guess what? That's why I even tell my children, don't get too attached to brothers. I tell them, don't get too attached to brothers because guess what they do? They will just say, you know what? To hell with this. Because I've seen this before. We had our brothers in here, they were close to the kids. You understand? And guess what? 
they dropped us like 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 a bad habit. They left this truth. You understand? So I've learned my lesson. You understand? Watch this. I'm gonna show you something. Give me that in. Uh, give me Second Timothy. Okay. Second Timothy chapter four verse nine. Watch this. That's why I tell you, brothers, especially you brothers, you still you still have that high school, primary, preschool mentality. You don't understand that this is a war. You must prepare for temptation. And the temptation will come from a brother that came in the truth with you. That temptation can come from him. Satan can jump on him and convince you to what? To leave this truth. That can easily happen, by the way. Now read that. First Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy 4, verse 9. Come on. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 9. Go ahead. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. You see what it's saying? It says, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. The diligence must mean be diligent in God's business. Go ahead. For Demas has forsaken me. You see that thing? For two Paul. Demas, he left the apostle Paul. He stopped laboring. He left his brother during the time of war. You understand? Demas, he did that. Why did he, why did he leave the apostle Paul? Go ahead. Having loved this present world. Because he loved this present world. He, was, he, he did not want to deny himself. He didn't want to bury the old man. He didn't want to die daily, like the scripture says. He says, because he loved this present world. Because then this present world is full of sin. You understand? Get that in Second Exodus. Okay. Second Exodus chapter 5, verse 40. This world is full of sin. Okay. Second Exodus chapter 5, verse 40. You know what? Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Let me see something real quick. No, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. Um, you know what? Give me First Corinthians 7. First Corinthians chapter 7. Um, read verse 31. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 31. Go ahead. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. You see what he's saying? He says we must use this world but not abusing it. Because the fashion of this world passes away. The fashions of this world is what? Is things that are against the laws of God. You understand? The world pushes everything against God's commandment. So it says the fashions of this world, they pass away. They are not going to be here forever. Go ahead. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried, careth for the things that belong to the Lord. Right. How he may please the Lord. You see that part right there? It says, it says, I would have you without carefulness, meaning without worry. It says, he that is unmarried cares for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. So you're not married. Your job is to make sure that you please the Lord. Even if you're married, you please the Lord. But he's telling you, you must have your priorities in order. That's what he's saying right here. Right now, you're not married. Your focus is to please the Lord. Make sure you keep God's commandment. You grow in this truth. You understand? You prepare your soul for temptation. But when you marry, go ahead, let's say it. But he that is married, careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. You see that thing meaning what? Now you've got you've got more responsibilities that are added to you. He says, he that is married, careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. That goes into a food, shelter, taking care of your kids and all of that stuff. That goes into this. He's not saying you care about DSTV. No, no, no. It's not talking about that. It doesn't mean you care about, um, I don't know, you care about you care about useless things that are happening in the world. When he says the care, he says what? He, uh, he says, he that is made care for the things that are of the world is not talking about worldly things that go against the law of God. Talk about worldly things, meaning the basic needs, basic needs in life. You understand? To sustain you, your wife, and your children. He's going into that. All right. So let's go back. Let's go back to Second Timothy 4. Read verse 10 again. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. For demons has forsaken me, having loved this present world, mm -hmm. and is departed unto Thessalonica, Christians right. to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. You see, Dal Dalmatia. So you see, all these brothers, they left the apostle Paul. Yeah. They left the Apostle Paul, he says, that's why it says, and brethren. That's why me, I don't get too attached to brothers. No, no. Mm -mm. Because your job is what? My job is to be in this book, 
teach you and guide you and show you what the most high boy and prepare you for the second coming. That's the job. You understand? And stay on the mission. Why? Because if you're not rooted, if you still have that boy mentality, you're still in the world and all of that, that for me is what? You basically a betrayer in disguise. You understand? You are a betrayer in disguise. That means not, not, not so much can be put on you because you can leave at any time because your mind is not here. That's why it says, and brethren. That's what you're seeing right there. They, are, they left the Apostle Paul. He says, what? Having loved this present world and his departed unto Thessalonica. You know, when you read the book of Acts, they didn't believe nothing. It says, present to Dal the Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. These, they left the Apostle Paul. Go ahead. Verse 11. Only Luke is with me. Only Luke is with me. So Luke was, was laboring with the Apostle Paul. Yeah. You understand? He didn't love this present world. Okay, come on. Take Mark and bring him with thee. Mm -hmm. For he is profitable to me for the ministry. You see what he's saying? So Luke and Mark was profitable to the Apostle Paul in, in his ministry. You see that thing? So that's why me, I look at small things. I, I examine little things. The big stuff, not so much. The small things, yes. Because that's how you're going to be able to tell. Hmm, that brother right there, something wrong with that brother. That sister right there, something is not quite right. You understand? So you have to be pay, you have to pay attention to such things. Watch this. Because the quickest way to see whether brethren are for this too, let them be corrected. Some brothers, they hold grudges when they get corrected. You understand? Some of you, you hide it, you think I don't think I see. Some, some brothers, you they get corrected. Me, I don't give a damn. You can hold grudges, but you're gonna die in that thing. My job is to say, listen, bro, this is the problem. The Bible says X, Y, and Z. Get it together. You understand? But some, some of you, you still holding on your mother's breath. You don't wanna let it go. You understand? You still attached to my, are you still attached to your mother? You have an unhealthy attachment to your mother. You understand? So now when you get corrected, you take it personal. You get upset. You hold a grudge. You understand? To hell with you. Why? Because that means that we are not going to be able to build when you have a spirit like that. So you hold on to that grudge. You wallow in it. You, it keeps playing over and over in your head. Guess what? You're not ready to grow up yet. You understand? Give me that in Psalm 55. Okay, Psalm chapter 55, read verse 12. I'm going to show you something. Here. Psalm chapter 55, verse 12. Mm -hmm. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Right. Then I could have borne it. Stop right there. It says, for it was not an enemy that reproached me. Meaning what? Now King David is talking about his own people that turned against him. Brethren. It says, it was, it, it, it says, for it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have gone, meaning I was going to be able to handle it because I know that's what they do. But brothers in the truth, they turn against you. It says, listen, that's the worst kind of betrayal. Okay, go ahead. Neither was it he that hated me that did make me fight himself against me. You see that thing? It was, it says, neither was it he that hated me that did make me fight himself. Because guess what? We believe the same thing. We're supposed to be brothers in this truth and do the work of the most High God that he called us to. Right? Go ahead. You would think. Come on. Then I would have hid myself from him. You see that thing? Is it then I would have what? Then I would have hid myself from him. Come on. But it was thou, a man mine equal. It says, but it was you, a man mine equal. Meaning we brothers in the truth. You, you, let, I'm going to go back to that thing again. We come into, you come into the truth with this brother, with that brother. You all come together. You come in together in the truth. Or one comes in first, and then you let other brothers know that you, you used to hang with in the world. They come into the truth. You understand? So now it says, but it was thou, a man mine equal. Because you're coming into the truth. You understand? You're learning the scriptures together. You're growing in the truth. Go ahead. My guide uh -huh. and my acquaintance. When it says my guide and my acquaintance, what is he talking about? Because guess what? Iron sharpen iron. You understand? 
Love your brother and love your neighbor as yourself. You correct one another. Watch this. But watch the next verse. Go ahead. We took sweet counsel together. We took sweet counsel together. What was the counsel? The classes that came up. Listen, yo, I was sitting with you in class. That brother was taking notes together. He was sitting right there next to me, taking notes. But look why now he's acting like a team. He says, we took sweet counsel together. You understand? You received the counsel just like I received the counsel. The class is coming up. You understand? The breakdown, whether deep or light breakdown, guess what? We took sweet counsel together. We were in class together. We went to school. We went to the seat together. You understand? Go ahead. And walked unto the house of God in company. We walked unto the house of God in company. Meaning when we came together to the school, we came together to enjoy the high holidays and so forth. You understand? So that's why he's, that's what he's explaining here. But guess what happened? They turned against the apostle Paul. I'm giving an example because King David he explained the same thing. You understand? He explained the same thing. But some of you are so naive, you come into the truth together, but you don't prove that friendship with the laws of God. You're still proving it according to the friendship that you had in the world. Watch this. Give me Jeremiah 9, verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 4. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 4. Come on. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, mm -hmm. and trust ye not in any brother. You see what the Bible is saying? Because yes, you know each other in the world, but when you come into this truth now, your friendship, quote unquote, it must now be proved and be built upon the laws of God. Some of you are afraid to do that. Because you don't want the brother that you came into the truth with to make, you don't want to make him uncomfortable. He's supposed to believe this just like you. If he's feeling offended or he's uncomfortable because you bringing X, Y, and, and Z to him as it is written, that's not your friend. That's your enemy right there. You understand? Read on. For every brother will utterly supplant. Mm -hmm. And every neighbor will walk with slanders. You see what he's saying? He says, because every brother will utterly supplant and every neighbor will walk with slanders. Meaning what? They'll try to slander you. They speak evil of you. You understand? That's what the Bible is telling us right there. So some of you, you still have that high school boy, uh, that high school, preschool mindset. You understand? That's not what this place is. This is not high school. This is not primary school. You understand? We literally waking up the 12 tribes of Israel to overthrow the empires that are ruling. So obviously that's not high school. This is the military. Okay? God's military. God's government being established on this earth. We know? And they will deceive everyone his neighbor. You see that thing? They will deceive everyone his neighbor. Because some of you, you, you don't trust in the Lord. You trust upon the brother you came into the truth with. That's some evil stuff. You put your trust in the Lord. Because that brother can turn like demons did. Like Titus did. You understand? When they turn against the apostle Paul. Easily. Go ahead. And will not speak the truth. Mm -hmm. They will not speak the truth. You understand? They will lie to your face. Go ahead. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. Mm. And wear themselves to commit iniquity. You see that thing? It says you tire yourself. You exhaust yourself by doing what? You call to commit sin. You were tirelessly to commit sin. So in this truth, what's supposed to influence you is the laws of God. Some of you, you have that Rehoboam syndrome. Some of you have talked to you about that. You've got the spirit of Rehoboam. Rehoboam didn't go up the chain. He went down the chain. He didn't go up the chain of command. He went down the chain of command. And it's not even a chain of command at all. It's just a chain of death. But you're going down there instead of going up the chain. You understand? Rehoboam syndrome. Some of you have that spirit. I'm talking to you, brothers and sisters. Be Okay? That rare bomb spirit is not going to work up in you. You need to understand that. Watch this. Keep going. Verse 6. Thy inhabitation is in the midst of deceit. Mm. Through deceit, they refuse to know me, says the Lord. You see what he's saying? He says, through deceit, they refuse to know him, says the Lord. Watch this. Give me that instruction. 
Give me Sarah chapter 6, uh, verse 9. You know what? Start at verse 7. Start at verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 7. You know what? Hmm. Read verse 6. I'm going to touch on something. Read verse 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Be in peace with many. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, be in peace with men. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. The Lord says, be in peace with men, but you have a counselor. What? You understand? Somebody that's going to counsel you. Somebody that you trust, but more importantly, somebody that is going to tell you not what you want to hear. Because I know how the mind of the Negro thinks. So here it's saying, you must have a counselor. Some of you, you don't, you, you, you don't seek counsel. And when you do, you come with a pile of you come with a pile of ish that you didn't deal with. You didn't follow the previous counsels that you, you, you were given before. So now the day you come for counsel, you bring in the old garbage with you. You understand? You're coming for counsel. And now you're expecting that all these things you want you want solutions to be given to you for all these problems. But the majority of the counsels that you receive, you never apply. You never apply it. You understand? So you're playing games. So when you come, that's why it says, because for every brother will utterly supplant. You're coming with the spirit of deceit. Because you coming, because sometimes you, you're coming, you say, no, I'm coming for counsel. Okay. But when I ask, start, ask questions, I realize that these counsels that you've received in the past, which you have not applied in them. But now you're coming, because you want to make a point of, no, but I did, I did go for, for counsel. You understand? To get my mind right. But in reality, you're just doing it so that you can say, you know, I've done counsel today. But you, after the counsel, some of you, once you get the counsel, um, the last time you would have written down the counsel is the time when the counsel was given out. As, as soon as you leave, you close the books, you, everything just, you just forget everything that you went for counsel. Some of you, literally, that's what happens. You understand? Keep going. Read verse 7 now. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. You see that part right there? You would have get, if, if you would have get a friend, if you want to get a friend, the Lord says you must prove him and don't be hasty to credit him. Don't be hasty to give that friend credit. Why? You must prove them with the laws of God. Are they really for this? Or they just fake in the fun? Or they're just going through the motion? You understand? Some of you, you're not doing that. Some of you, you come into the truth with brothers that you used to know in the world, but you're not proving that brother with the, with the scriptures. You're just going through the emotions. The old man has not been put to death. Because that brother is a familiar spirit. Now that you come into this truth, you're supposed to actually use the word of God to say, okay, now that we are in this truth now, we came in together and so forth. We need to what? I need to sit down and do what this Bible says so that I can be able to deal with evil spirits that are within me. You understand? That I may be able to recognize evil spirits that I come my way to destroy me in this truth. Whether it's somebody that came with me in the truth that I used to know in the world, because if they leave, guess what you're going to do if you're not rooted? You're going to leave. You're going to follow right behind you. You understand? That's why it's called friendship. You understand? Understand that. Go ahead. For some man is a friend for his own occasion mm -hmm. and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. They are only they are only with you when things are bad. When you understand, when things are good. When things go bad, you don't find they disappear. They change up on you. Okay. Read on. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. You see that thing? Meaning one. That's why it says we took sweet counsels together. Now you check a brother because you appear, you check him. But he doesn't want to be checked. When you check him, he takes offense. That's why he says, and there is a friend who will be turned to empty and strife will discover their reproach. Now he turns against you. Now you hate him. Now who do you think you are? That's the thing. That's how you know. That's how you can tell. Some of you brothers will be Camp is done. We having we doing. We talk about what happened at camp and all that. You understand? We will we will laugh about things that would happen in big place. 
you have this one brother, he's just sitting there by himself, he's not laughing. And when he laughs, he's forcing the laugh. I see that type of spirit and hmm. How is it that we are all in the same spirit, but you have this wicked Negro right here, he's just sitting there, you understand? He's like he's forcing himself to laugh with the brothers, with the brethren. You just came to from war with them. Could you imagine that? Because me, I pick, I pick stuff like that. I see stuff like that. I'm like, hmm. That's for me, it's something to take note of. You understand? Because I've seen that, I've seen that demon before. I've seen that spirit before. So I have to be very mindful around you. You understand? Here, brothers are laughing when you're sitting there by yourself in some corner somewhere. You understand? Go ahead. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Again, some friend is a companion at the table. You see that? Some friend is a companion at the table. Now that goes that goes into obviously um, you know, when things are good, they are next to you. When things are bad, they are nowhere to be found. But this also goes into what feast. When we're having feast days and all that, we all come together, we take sweet counsel together, we eat the meat. We eat the bread. You understand? We have our leg. We have we, we laugh. We have strong drink and all that stuff. Guess what? It says again. Some friend is a companion at the table. You only hear because of the what? Because of the feed day. You understand? Because of the bread. You understand? The meat that perishes. You only hear for that. Go ahead. And will not what? And will not continue in the day of thy affliction. In the day of your temptation. Remember, it says, my son, if you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. It says, in the day of your affliction, it says what? You're not going to find them. In the day of your trial. Because the day of your trial could be you having a disagreement. Are you going to use the word of God to solve it? Or is it going to be an emotional back and forth tennis match? Go ahead. But in thy prosperity, he will be as thyself. He will be just like you will be as yourself. You understand? He's going to be as though, listen, this brother right here, this is a good brother right here, because what? The conditions are just perfect. The conditions are just right. You understand? Go ahead. And will be bold over thy servants. He's going to be, he's even going to be bold over your servants. Meaning what? People come to your house. He'd be the one telling them what to do and what not to do. You, you see that thing? Because things are good. Okay, go ahead. If thou be brought low, he will be against thee. He says, if you are, if, if what? If you are brought low, he says, he's going to be against you. Meaning, in a way, in a way you can no longer benefit. He says, he's going to be against you. Go ahead. And will hide himself from thy face. Because why? When trouble comes, they will disappear. Okay. So that's why it's very important to be rooted in the script. Because a man's mind will be changing on a daily basis. But you root yourself in the laws of God. The most that God says, I'm the same. I change not. You understand? Go ahead. Separate thyself from thine enemies. Mm -hmm. And take heed of thy friends. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, your job is to separate yourself from your enemies. Your enemies is the so-called friend. You understand? It's called the so-called friendship that you have in the two. You understand? No, but... That's my brother. I, I used to know him. We came in together and to, to hell with that. The most I don't deal with that stuff. The most I don't deal with friendship. You don't deal with that. Okay? That's why I said, separate thyself from thine enemies and take heed of thy friends. Meaning be mindful. Don't be hasty to friends. Okay, go ahead. A faithful friend is a strong defense. Because a faithful friend will use the Bible to correct you. Go ahead. And he that has found such an one has found a treasure. You see what he's saying? And he that has found such an one, you find a treasure because that type of a friend that will tell you you are wrong according to the Bible, guess what? That's a friend. He says it's difficult to find that type of a friend. That's what the Bible is saying. You understand? So some of you, you don't have this. Some of you, you are here because of friendish. You understand? You're not gonna be the most I cannot use you with a mindset like that because why? Because you can destroy everything, you have the potential to destroy. You understand? So go back to Luke. Go back to Luke 14, verse 26. Let's go back. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. 
Go ahead. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So remember, he's mentioning people here. He's mentioning different people. Your mother, your father, your children, your wife. Then he says, and brethren. Okay, and brethren. And what? And sisters too. This goes into the sisters in the truth. Sister. Because one thing I've seen is that even in the world, sisters, they don't really, they, they get along, but not really. And guess what? I'm going to hit you with something. I'm seeing the same thing in the truth. I'm seeing sisters, they get along, but they don't really get along. It's like there's this huge elephant in the room. And some of you sisters have spoken to you about it. You understand? There's just this, this cold war going on. Some secret hatred going on. You understand? Me, I will have, me, I address this thing. Because I saw it, I addressed it. This was a while back. Then I'm observing, I see it. It's not spoken, but I see it. You understand? There's this secret war going on. Oh yes, sisters, you hearing me? Of course, I'm talking to you this week. Right now, I'm talking to you, sisters. You better fix that. You understand? All these classes that are coming up, you better fix that thing. Because the sisters, the one thing about the sisters, you ask them, sisters, are everything good? Yes, everything is all good. But I can see the way they interact. Hmm, something is still off. You understand? And you brothers that are married. You understand? You better fix that thing with your wife. Okay? There's no way that your wife will walk into the house. She's got some secret hatred or some secret anger or bitterness towards another sister. You just be sitting there. You don't say nothing. That is some evil stuff. Yo, you got to explain it. You got to fix it in the house. You're not going to have the walking around it. Every day you pray to the Lord. You ask for, for mercy and all that. But you have a secret hatred against your sister. You don't, you don't really get along, but you just pretend. Because sisters know how to do that. They know how to do that so well. Pretend. You understand? Read that verse again for me. Verse 26. You see me. They're going to say, mm, he's causing problems. Oh, praise the Lord. Read that thing for me. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Go ahead. If any man come to me, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters. Yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. He says, and sisters, you see, brothers and sisters in the truth. You understand? Because you got to explain it. So, you sisters, make sure, because guess what? I was talking to one, one sister. How often do you talk one to another? Not so often. What the hell is this? Here you are, you're in the truth, but you hardly ever talk to your sister on a daily. That's a huge red flag. You understand? Something wrong. You hardly communicate one to another on a daily basis. That's crazy. Because when I have this, I'm like, this is madness. You better make sure the two of you, you must communicate on a daily basis. How are you going to be able to be a good example to the new sisters that are coming in? How are you going to be able to be on one accord but you don't talk one to another on a daily basis. Again, brothers, you brothers that are married, you better make sure that you fix that nonsense in your house. You understand? I'm not going to tolerate that stuff. Because that thing is going to cause issues in the house. And guess what it breeds? It is going to breed pillow talk. It breeds pillow talk, that thing. That thing will take pillow talk in your house. You understand? Before you know it, you out this too. Yeah. Let's get there. Let me put the spirit out there. Give me that in my cassette. Zimia, they say, I'm always causing problems with the word of the most I've got. Now read that thing for me. Micah 7 verse 5. Read it. Micah chapter 7 verse 5. Go ahead. Trust ye not in a friend. Uh -huh. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Read. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her. That lieth in thy bosom. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, keep the doors of your mouth from the head that lieth in thy bosom. That's talking about your wife. You understand? It says what? Because it's, the most high God is teaching the black man 
to prevent pillow talk. Because pillow talk will come with many, many, multiple avenues and multiple angles. So me, I don't want this system. You better make sure that you fix your relation. You must fix it. You have the scriptures, the, you have the Holy Bible with you. You understand? But you're not applying it. You're not listening to classes. You, know, you must apply these things. Because if you don't, how are you going to be a good example to the sisters that, um, that come in, that are here? How are you going to be that good example to say, oh, that's what it means to actually, um, you know, getting along with your sister in the truth. That's what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. Because in the truth, in the world, sisters just don't hate each other. They backstep one another. You understand? They envy each other. They are jealous of one another. You see the same thing in the truth too. I can't believe what I'm seeing. You can't make this stuff up. You understand? Now, let's go back. Go back to Luke. Okay. You know what? Hmm. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes. Give me Sarah 37. Watch this. Give me Sarah chapter 37. Read verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 37 verse 7. Mm -hmm. You know what? Start of verse 10. Start of verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 37 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Consult not with one that suspected thee. He says, don't consult with anybody that suspects you. Meaning what? They suspect or, yeah, but you know, you know, the council is personal. You know, they are canceling me, but you know, any day. Listen, the most that God says, uh, consult not with one that suspected you because you're already thinking or, mm, but you know, when the council come out, you know, they're just going to be telling me what I'm wrong on this, I'm wrong on that. Then don't be counsel and die in your sin. Go ahead. And hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. He says, hide your counsel from such as envy. So guess what? You're, gonna, we, we, you're not going to get counsel because that means you have the spirit of envy the Bible tells you what the spirit behind it is. You understand? Because the root of envy is hatred. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 37, verse 11. Read. Neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous. I don't consult with a woman know, who you know that she's jealous of another sister. You're talking about her. You're talking about you asking, you seeking counsel from this sister. But this sister has, is jealous over that same sister that you counseling about. He says, don't do that. That's why, because there's secret hatred and envy, you understand? That's why now sisters, they are not talking one to another on a day to day. It's, ama it's amazing. It's unbelievable. I don't get that. You understand? Because why? There's some envy going on. There's some evil going on. There's some secret hatred going on. And I've addressed this thing in the past. I've addressed it in the past multiple times. Sisters still don't want to get there. They don't want to fix this thing. You understand? But me, I'm going to keep putting on a blast. Okay. Now, let's go back to Luke. Luke 14. Read verse 26 for me. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Go ahead. If any man come to me, Mm -hmm. And hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters. And what? Hey, and sisters. So brethren and sisters, go ahead. Yea, and his own life also. And his what now? And his own life also. And his own life also. Remember, in Matthew 10, verse, 30, verse 34 down, he's listing all these people that are around him. The people in your house, your wife, your children, you understand? Your sons and daughters, your, your, your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your father, your mother. Then it mentioned, it, then it says children, then it says brethren, then it says sisters, then it says yea, and his own life also. Because what? once you've done with, you've done with all that, you still have to deal with yourself. You see that part right there? And his own life also, you still have to deal with yourself on this one. That's what this is going into. It says you also must now deal with your own self. You understand? Now you got to fight with your own self now. You have to get rid of the old man on a daily. 
And if the old man is dealing with, uh, uh, you've got other, you've got external influences, which is your father, your mother, your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, your sister, your brother, your children, your wife, your husband. Then when it's all, then outside of that, you've got you to deal with. Because guess what? You can be an enemy to your own life. Just like the people will be an enemy to you in this truth, because of this truth, you yourself also can be an enemy to your own life. You stand in your own way. You understand? Now I'm going to show you that. Watch this. Give me the book of James 1, verse 12. James 1. James chapter 1, verse 12. That's why it says, and his own life also. Hmm. You know what? Before you get me, James. Yeah, Romans chapter 6. Romans 6, read verse 3. Let's start there. Romans 6, verse 3. Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Go ahead. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? You see that thing? Many of us, meaning many of the Israelites, is as, as we're baptized into Christ Jesus, into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death because Christ died for us. Okay, go ahead. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. You see that thing? He says, because of that, we are also, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Meaning what? Just as he died for us in Rome, we also must die with him and rise. So the evil man will be buried. The new man will be born. You understand? Go ahead. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. You know, meaning also, just like Christ was, he was raised up from the dead the same day, by the glory of the Father, even so, meaning the same way, we also, the children of Israel, should walk in the newness of life. Meaning what? The old man must be buried, that the new man may live. That's what he's talking about right there. That old man, the new man. Watch this. Give me 1 Corinthians 15. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse, verse 44. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. You see that thing? It is sown a natural body, meaning what? We are buried with him by baptism unto his death. You understand? Then it says what? It is raised a spiritual body. That now in the newness of life. The spiritual meaning what spiritual body is what? The body that keeps the laws of God. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Um, read verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Go ahead. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. The natural man is that sinful man that must be buried on a daily basis. Like the apostle Paul said, I die daily. That's why Luke, in, in, in Luke, Christ said, and in, in his life also, he cannot be my disciple. This goes into you now. You having to make sure that the old man gets buried on a daily basis. So that's what we're reading here. Go ahead. For they are foolishness unto him. You see that thing? Because the spiritual things are foolishness unto us, unto that natural man. The natural man, he cannot understand those things. So when you read the laws of God and show him what the Bible says and that he must apply, he sees those things as foolish things. Okay, come on. Neither can he know them mm -hmm. because they are spiritually discerned. You have to discern spiritual things by the spirit of the Lord, which is God's commandment. When you are spiritual, hmm, get that. Um, in Romans 7 verse 14, let's see what it means to be spiritual. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Go ahead. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. So go back. First Corinthians now. Chapter 2. Read verse 15. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15. Come on. But he that is spiritual judges all things. But he that is spiritual judges all things. If you are spiritual, that means you're keeping the laws of God. That's the spiritual body. The spiritual man, the spiritual body, guess what? They house and keep God's commandments. 
right? Yet he himself is just of no man. When it says, and yet he himself is just of no man, meaning what? Nobody will be able to judge you um, regarding the things that, because you already keep, you are already doing those things. So if you're spiritual, you'll judge all things. You understand? And you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna leave room for somebody to what to say, but you judging me for this, but you're doing it as well. You understand? So, but now because you are no longer doing those things, the old man is being put to death on the day. You will not be what you're not gonna be able to. Uh, nobody will, will you, nobody will will use something against you that you are currently judging at that particular point. You understand? So that's what he's going into. Okay. So let's go back. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Read verse 44 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44. It is sown a natural body. It mm -hmm. is raised a spiritual body. Come on. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. So our job every day, daily when we die daily, our job is to kill the natural body. Because the natural body is always lasting for stuff. The natural body is the sinful body that is lasting for everything and anything. Our job is to kill the natural body by make, by what? By feeding the spiritual body. The spiritual body, when it's fed, the natural body will be will become anorexic over time. You understand? So that's what it's saying right there. So go back to Romans 6. Romans chapter 6, read verse 5 again. Romans chapter 6, verse 5. No, no, verse 4. We're going to read 4, then we're going to jump to 5. Come on. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Read. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Mm -hmm. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. We also should walk in newness of life because that would be the spiritual man that keeps the laws of God, that dies daily to kill the natural man, the sinful man. Go ahead. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, mm -hmm. we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. You see that thing in the newness of life, may be born again. That was just for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, because remember, it says it is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 44. So what we're reading here says, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we are sown the spiritual body, the natural body, the natural body sown. You understand? It says, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. You understand? The spiritual man is born. We are born again. That's what he's talking about right there. You understand? So now watch this. Now let's go to James. James chapter 1. That's what it says, and it is life also. His life also. Okay. James chapter James 1, 1 verse 12. Come on. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Mm -hmm. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Okay, read that verse again, verse 12. James chapter 1, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. Stop right there. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. So what is he letting us know? He says, he's, he's letting us know you're going to have to fight to endure the, the, the temptation. Whatever your issue is, whatever your vice is, whatever the demon that you're dealing with that doesn't want to go away, keeps coming back over and over, he's letting you know, he says what? You have to endure the temptation that comes with it. Because that's going into what? You come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. And part of that preparation is you must learn the spirit of endurance. You must learn to endure. And the, in, the way to endure is to, you have to discipline your spirit so that your flesh can be weak. You have to discipline your spirit. You must be able to work. You must stand on the laws of God. Because your flesh is lacking for everything and anything. So here the Lord is saying through the Apostle James, he says, blessed is the man that endures temptation. Meaning the trial. You fight. You don't give up. You don't give in. Go ahead. For when is what? 
For when he is tried. When he's tried means when he's tempted. When you are tempted, when you are tried, because remember the temptations, you're going to have different temptations throughout. Your temptation might be money, your temptation might be women, your temptation might be power, your temptation might be pride, your temptation might be hatred, envy, your temptation might be being slothful, your temptation might be um, armed, your temptation might be homosexuality, your temptation might be lesbianism. Your temptation might be, I want to be a feminist. That could be your temptation. You understand? I want to rule over men. That could be your temptation. But he says, but when you are tempted, go ahead. He shall receive the crown of life. When you are tempted and you enjoy the temptation, he says, you're going to receive the crown of life. But well, that's what? Everlasting life. Come on. Which the Lord has promised to them that love him. The Lord has promised to those that keep his law. That's what it means, love. You understand? Go ahead. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Stop right there. You know what? Hmm. Read verse 12 again. James chapter 1 verse 12. Read. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Mm -hmm. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. So now it is blessed is the man that enjoys temptation, for when he's tried, he shall receive the crown of life. When he's tempted, when he's tested, that's what it means when he's tried. When you are tested, when you are tempted. Watch this. Give me first Peter 4, verse 12. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Mm -hmm. As though some strange thing had happened unto you. Read that again. First Peter chapter 4 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened unto you. You see what the Bible is saying? It is the thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Because the trials that will come, it will be like, you know, th this is a strange thing. This thing, it seems like it just comes out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, you understand? I find myself in a cold. It's a strange thing because that's how it comes. You see that part right there? It says, beloved, thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. This fiery trial is designed to try to test you. And it's gonna it's gonna be like as though a strange thing is happening unto you. Out of nowhere, causing confusion and all that. You understand? Is that why it says it's gonna look like something strange is happening? It's gonna just take place in a strange way. It's gonna come to you in a strange way. So the most that God is teaching us when he says we must die daily, we must examine ourselves. The reason why he's saying that you must learn to recognize it. You must learn to see the symptoms of it. That, you know what? I'm seeing where there's a trial coming because I can see little bits of pieces of, of, of the blames of this thing that it's coming from. Meaning Satan is coming from my head. So when you look at that, is that hmm, the Lord says, you must what? That's why it says, examine yourself. You understand? Whether you be in the faith, whether you're in the spirit, for you to recognize the trial that is on his way. So you can better prepare for it. That when it comes, you will find a way to avoid it with the laws of God. You understand? And that takes practice. That takes repetition. That takes diligence. That takes discipline. You understand? It's not an overnight thing. And that trial will come maybe every week. It will come upon you. Every week you find yourself, this thing just keep coming over me. I keep getting knocked down. Or oh, every two months. Every three months, once a year, every six months, you understand? Because that's that 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 that's what's gonna that's the difference between you growing and you being stagnant in this truth. That's the difference between that is between the, the this is it's either gonna give you the spirit to grow or you're gonna be stagnant or give up. That trial is designed for that thing to happen, and it's gonna happen in the same way. It's going to happen in odd times, in an odd way. 
Your job is to recognize it. All our jobs is to do that thing. So we can be able to recognize it and enjoy it when it comes. You understand? So now, watch this. Give me that in um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. 2 Timothy 2, verse 3. I'm going to show you something with the trials, the temptations that we must be here. Okay? Because it's not small things. It's not small things because all our lives, we've been conditioned, you understand, to indulge in our lust. You understand? So the fight is quite heavy. It's a heavy fight. It's a spiritual war. There's a war within yourself. If there was war, if there was, that war is in your mind. It's taking, play in, it's taking place in your mind. Now your mind has to what? You have to use the laws of God to overcome what your flesh wants. That, that's that internal war. That's why Christ said, and his life also, he shall not be my disciple if you cannot deny your own life. Okay, read that. Second Timothy 2 verse 3. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. Go ahead. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You see what he's saying? He says we must endure hardness. So the hardness, he says, he says endure hardness. In James, he says, blessed is the man that endures temptation. So the hardness is the temptation, the trial. is also letting you know this, the trial each, each and every one of us, we're going to have one thing. We're going to have that thing that is hard to overcome. But that thing is how you're going to get the case if you overcome it. You overcome that thing, that's how you're going to overcome it. That's how you get the case. Because that's going to be your one. That's your gatekeeper. That's your decider. You understand? But the thing is, um, another thing also is, don't tell yourself, you know, I got this on board. Don't say that. Don't say I've got this on lock because that's when Satan will say you're dead. You say you got it on lock, no problem. Satan will come down and cause confusion and see, okay, do you have it on lock? Really? You really have it on lock? Let's see if you have this on lock. You understand? Okay, come on. Verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of his life. Mm -hmm. That he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. You see what he's saying? He says, no man that warreth, because this is the war. This is a spiritual war that we're in. We are in a spiritual war. This is not a physical war that we're in. It's a spiritual one. That was says, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this. The affairs of this life is what? The distractions of this life. Social media, you understand? YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you understand? Twitter, that's the affairs of this life. Mubozim, gossip, gossiping, getting getting distracted with the things that your family members do and all that. The Lord says, no man that worries, because the Lord called you into a war, a spiritual war that you're going to have within yourself, within your spirit, you understand, and with the people around you that are closest to you, in order for you to, uh, to fight for this book. That's why it says, because you're coming, for, you're coming here to war, no man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this life. But our job is to please him who has chosen us to be soldiers. A soldier's job is, is a soldier's job is one thing. Stay on the mission. Learn how to win your weapon. Learn how to use your weapon. And understand your weapon inside out because this is a war. You must arm yourself. Because anytime is tea time, anytime Satan can come and come and cause confusion in your life to see if you are rooted in this book. Are you gonna fight for the Lord? You're gonna indulge in that life. That's the fight for both men and women. You understand? So um go back to James. Okay, James chapter James 1, read verse 12 again. James chapter 1, verse 12. Go ahead. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Mm -hmm. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Go ahead. Which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Watch this. Come on. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Stop right there. It says, let no man or woman say when he's tempted that they are God, the most like God is the one that's tempting them. The apostle James is going to explain to us. When you get tempted, what is it that gets tempted in you? Remember it says, and his life also. So this is talking about you. 
You understand? We talk about men and women. Go ahead. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Mm -hmm. Neither tempteth he any man. The Lord will not be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But watch this. Go ahead. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And that's a heavy thing right there. The reason why we get tempted is not because the Lord is doing it. The reason why we get tried and tested is not because the Lord is doing it. It is because your lust, you are tempted because you are drawn away. He says drawn away. Away from what? You are drawn away from the laws of God by your lust. Because why? You get enticed by the fact that it's going to feel good when you indulge in it. That's why it says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and is enticed. So each and every one of us, we are going to be tested based on the lust that exists within. We all dealing with lust. And lust is not talking about just sexual lust. Talk about all type of lust. All type of lust, we all dealing with some type of lust. If you're not, ah, that means, listen, you an angel. The most that God is telling us that we are going to be tempted because of our own lust. That's why it's important for you to know what you're dealing with. That's why everybody knows what you're dealing with. You can lie to me. You can lie to your brother next to you. But guess what? Don't lie to yourself about it. You know you put it to the Lord. Don't lie to the Lord or don't pretend that you're not dealing with it. No. The most High is letting you know what brings you into sin. What's the reason why you get tempted? Remember, Satan is tempting you about the things that he knows that exist in you. You may understand that? Yes, sir. Satan is not going to, let's say, your vice, let's say you're struggling with, I don't know, let's say your problem, you, 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 you love money. Satan is not going to test you with, um, he's not going to test you with, 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 with a woman. Maybe that's, yeah, he's not going to test you with that because he knows that's not your issue. He's going to test you with something that exists inside of you. You understand? I'm going to give an example. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Um... Yeah, 1 Corinthians 10. Uh, read verse 13. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Mm -hmm. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to men. You see that thing? Is that there is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to men. Whatever temptation that you have, whatever lust that you exist inside of you, is that it's common to men, meaning it's not a new thing. You understand? Go ahead. But God is faithful. Because the Lord is faithful. The Most High is faithful. If the Most High God is not going to allow Satan to tempt you with something that does not exist inside of you that needs to be purged out. The Most High is just. He's going to make sure that whenever, whenever Satan comes, and, because Satan is a whole spirit. The spiritual demon Satan is a whole spirit. His job is to what? When he comes to test you, He's not going to come and test you with, um, with lying when your problem is big booty, big booty woman. That's not, his, that's not how he's going to test you. He's going to test you with big booty woman. He's going to test you with a woman. He's going to test you with an harlot, whatever, however it comes. You understand? He might test you at work. All of a sudden, the sister just starts smiling, uh, uh, smiling at you out of nowhere. But because you're not watching, you're not proving, you're not preparing your soul for temptation, Satan is coming for your head, your soul. All of a sudden, the sister just starts being friendly to you. Hmm, Satan. That's how you look at it. You sisters as well. Because you sisters as well, you also have your own demon, lust issues as well. You understand? All of a sudden, there's this brother that used to be your so-called type in the world. Now all of a sudden, this brother is just in between. You understand? In the text, at work, at the mall, at the shop. He's just friendly towards you. Hmm? Satan. That's Satan now coming up to you because 
Satan knows oh, that's your vice. That's what you're struggling with. That's what you're dealing with. So I'm going to send somebody who's going to activate that thing. Your job is to what? Is to say, okay, I need to know where to go to combat this. That's why it says, blessed is the man that endures temptation. You see this thing? Hmm. Go ahead. Finish that verse. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. You see that thing? The Lord says, the Lord is not going to allow you to, to be tempted or tested above that which you are able. Meaning something that you are not dealing with. Let me, let me put it this way. Every temptation that comes is based upon whatever lust that exists inside of you. It's not going to be something foreign. It's going to be something familiar that exists within you that Satan knows that this thing is not gone. This thing is still heavy on you. Satan will use that thing because that's what exists in you. The most is not going to allow Satan to come and test you something that is not inside of you. You understand? Read on. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape? Mm -hmm. That ye may be able to bear it. The Lord says, I'm going to give you a way to escape. The way that the Lord gave us to escape is this Bible. He gave us the Bible. The Bible is our escape. That's how we escape from what? From these fiery trials that will come upon us to try it. The most that God has given us the Bible to escape. The law, his commandment. That's our way to escape the, the, the wiles of the devil, the Satan to come and devour us. The Lord says, you're going to use this Bible to fight back. You're going to use the scriptures to combat this thing. You understand? So go back to James. James 1. Read verse 14 again. James chapter 1 verse 14. Go ahead. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You see that thing? You Because you'll be going to be taken away. Because Satan's job is to separate you from this book. The job of Satan is to separate you from this book. Because your Bible is your safety. The Bible is your safety net. Once you are separated from this book right here, Satan will, will definitely have his way with you. That's what the Apostle James is letting us know. Don't be drawn away of your lust because your lust is what is warring in your member. You understand? Go ahead. Then when the lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. You see that thing? When Now when he indulges in that sin, in that lust, it says it will bring forth sin because now we partake in it. Now we indulge in it because we want to satisfy our flesh. Read. Right? And sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. And when sin it is finished, it will bring forth death. That means sin has a beginning, sin has a middle, sin has a finish. You see that part right there? It says when sin, when, when it is finished, I get it gets conceived. It says it brings forth sin. That's the last. You understand? And it says what? And sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. Sin has a beginning, middle, and an end. Meaning it starts, it's got level. So if you don't fight, then the, the level of sin will increase. You understand? And it will get to a point where it will reach a threshold where now it will be difficult for you to come out of it. That's when death comes. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Do not err, my beloved brethren. You see what he's saying? Do not err, meaning don't sin. Don't indulge in that lust, my beloved brethren. So he's telling us, listen, this is the reason why you get tempted is because of the lust that exists within you and Satan knows about it. That's why the most High God he gave us. Give me Sarah 37, 37. This is what the Lord commanded us that we must do. We must do this thing right here. Okay, read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 37, verse 27. Mm -hmm. My son, prove thy soul in thy life. That's that word again. Prove thy soul in thy life. The proving part is the preparation part. My son, prepare thy soul in thy life. That's what he's saying. Prove it. 
You must prove your own soul. You may, how do you prove your own soul is going to tell you how to do it, right? And see what is evil for it. Uh -huh. And give not that unto it. It says you must prove your soul in your life and see what is evil for your soul. Your job is to investigate and know, okay? This, this, this list of things right here, these lists, this list of things, this is actually what is evil for my soul. This. You know, all, everybody knows, you know that this thing right here is evil for my soul. That thing right there is evil for my soul. So on and so forth. Your job is to what? Is to figure that out. You understand? And then the Lord is giving you a way to escape. He says, don't give that which you know is evil for your soul. Don't give it to your soul. Because you know it's evil for it. So what is he saying? Abstain. Stay away. Run. Because you know it's evil for your soul. Meaning escape. You understand? So that's how you make sure that what? That's how you make sure that what? You don't err, like James says in what? James chapter 1 verse 16. You understand? Give me Sarah 18 verse 30. Sarah chapter 18 verse 30. Because there's no way that um, when you can say, no, no, leadership must let me know what's wrong with me. You know what's wrong with you. You know what's evil for your soul. Your job is to seek counsel. Where can I go to find scriptures that deal with X, Y, and Z? I give you already know what the issue is. But when you come, you try to butter it, you try to cover it up. Me, I'm going to blow up your soul. I'm going to go into the scriptures to show you what it is that you're trying to do. So you don't have to deal with it. So because you were running away from it. You understand? So the key is don't run away from your issues. Some of you, you are afraid to face yourself. You are afraid to, to look at the man in the mirror. You are afraid to look at the woman in the mirror. That's why many of you, you don't seek counsel because you are afraid to find out what's going on. You are afraid to find out how to resolve it because you cannot possibly believe or that's you. I mean, that's how dumb do you have to be? That's dumb. You can't be afraid to deal with the, your issues that you know. These are my issues. Some of you are talking to you about some issues that you've got. Some of you are working on them. Some of you are not. Some of you, you are just faking the fun. Some of you are not. Some of you are, you are just pretending you think we can't see you. So that means you're just telling Satan, come and just cut my head off. You understand? Okay. Um, read that. Track 18, verse 30. Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 30. Read. Go not after thy last. You see what I'm saying? Don't go after your last. But in order for you not to go after your last, you would have to know what your last is. You would have to know what your last is so that you don't go after it. That's why it says, prove thy soul in thy life and see what is evil for it and don't give that unto it. That's what that's the same thing. Go not after your last because it's many. Go ahead. But refrain thyself from thine appetites. But refrain yourself from your appetite. Your appetite goes into your lust. Some of you, your lust is alcohol. When you drink it, you become, you become mean, you become upset, you become emotional. You just become this big bundle of emotions. Some of you have told me, I've spoken to you about that. That means alcohol is not for you. You stay away from it. You understand? I think two brothers, I've spoken to you about that. You understand? Because drinking is not for you. You stay away from it. You understand? You become, you become filled with anger and rage and all that. That means something you can do something harmful to your brother or a sister. You understand? In which case, you bye-bye. It was nice knowing you. So your job is to do what? Your job is to see, you know what? I must not go after this last because why? Because guess what? This is what's evil for my soul. You understand? Some of you have dealt with, I've talked to you about that. You've got rage. You've got a lot of anger. You understand? You are easily offended. Guess what? You must know these things. Well, you know what? Okay, that's right. Yeah, I'm dealing with this stuff. 
But are you dealing with it? Because just knowing about it don't mean that. Some of you secretly, you are you lusting after us, you are lusting after men. Secretly. You understand? But you don't want to confess that thing to the Lord. Right? Confess it to the Lord and say, you know what? I'm dealing with this. I need to, I want to stop. Some of you can't stay away from uh, masturbating. You can't stay away from watching porn. You understand? You can't stop. Secretly, you are doing it, but you don't want to speak up. You don't want to confess that thing to the Lord. You understand? But you know it's evil for your soul. There's classes online that you can watch. We have an evil computer in class because that's a big one in Israel that I've seen thus far. Okay, go ahead. Verse 31. If thou givest thy soul the desires that please her. Stop right there. He says, if, remember, he is mentioning this is about your soul. If you give your soul the desires that please her. You see, your soul will desire things that are against the truth, that are against the Bible, because your soul is following your flesh. But if you come to serve the Lord, you must prepare your soul for temptation. Prepare that soul for temptation so that you don't give the desires of your soul the things that please her, which is what? Which is going against the laws of God, which is evil for it. Right? She will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies that malign thee. You see that thing? Because that, those, that, those lusts, those appetites, they are going to make you a laughing stock to your enemies that hate you. You understand? So to prevent all that, the Lord says we must what? We must refrain, abstain. A refrain goes into abstain. We must repent. You must repent. You cannot surround yourself with things that you know is evil for you. If you know it's evil for you, you cannot surround yourself with it. Otherwise, you're going to devour it. You understand? That's what the, the Apostle James was really showing us in this. Do not err, my beloved brethren. And another thing also is that the minute you say you've got it on law, guess what? You lost the, you've lost the fight already. I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Watch this. Give me that. Go back to 1 Corinthians 10. Now read this, verse 12. 1 Corinthians 10. Read verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Read it again. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. He says, wherefore, let him that thinks he standeth. You think you've got it? You think you have it, you have it unlocked? He says, you must take heed lest you fall. Take heed lest you fall into that temptation that's evil for your soul. That's going to destroy you. So never think you have it unlocked. You know why? Look at that in um, Luke 4. Okay. Luke chapter 4, might be verse 13. Yeah, Luke 4, verse 13. Watch this. Luke chapter 4, verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. You see that? Talk about Christ. It says, when the devil had ended all, his, all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Because the temp when Satan comes, he will tempt you for a season and then he goes. And then, guess what? He's going to return back again. To tempt you again. And then again and again and again and again until the Lord returns. He's not going to stop. Your job is to learn how to recognize it and what and combat and fight and avoid it and escape being caught up into it. Caught up, caught up unto it. So read that verse again, verse 13. Luke chapter 4, verse 13. Go ahead. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. He departed from him for a season. So it is important for you to understand that it's a seasonal. These, 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 the temptations, your trial, they are seasonal. It will come maybe every week or every month or every day. That, that heavy sin that you're struggling with, that heavy sin that cannot seem to give you a break is because 
when Satan leads you to come to only so that he can return back in, in the next season, you don't prepare while he's gone. Because I get your job is supposed to prepare. Your job is to does to prepare yourself for this season. Because Satan comes soon. He's just gonna keep coming, he's not gonna stop. His job is to devour you, to destroy you. He's just gonna keep coming. You understand? So you must prepare for what's to come. Spiritually, you must prepare yourself. Mentally, you must prepare yourself. Root yourself in this book. That's all our job is to do. So that Satan does not devour us like a roaring lion, as the scripture says. You understand? So now, watch this. Um, give me the book of Hebrews 2. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15. Because Christ was tempted. Because in the Christian church, they say, no, Christ was not like us, so which means he wasn't tempted. Watch this. Hebrews 2, verse 16. Read that. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 16. Come on. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels. He says he took not on him the nature of angels. Go ahead. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. He comes out of our forefather Abraham, the lineage of our forefather Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons, one of which was Judah. Christ comes out of that lineage of Judah, the seed of David. So now watch this. He says he took on not on him the nature of angels. What is the nature of angels? Give me Hebrews 1 verse 7. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 7. Go ahead. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? You see, angels are created out of fire. Angels, spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire because he, and these angels, they are ministering unto him. You understand? But they were made out of what? A flame of fire. We are not born like that. We are, we are, the angels are not born. They are created. We are born. You understand? Of the seed of man. So go back to Hebrews 2 verse 16 again. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 16. Go ahead. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Mm -hmm. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. With the seed of a man. Go ahead. Wherefore, in all things, it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren. You see that thing? He says, wherefore, in all things, meaning every which way Christ was created, was made, he says, in all things, how he was born. That goes into all things. How was he born? From man and a woman, delaying together, and woman falling pregnant, woman giving birth. In all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, meaning it was necessary or suitable for him to be made like us. Go ahead. Why? Come on. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. You see that thing? That he may be a merciful and high and faithful high priest. Because if Christ was like Gabriel and all that. He wasn't going to understand what we're going through. The reason why he was able to be merciful, his mercy is because he lived like us, he was born like us, so he suffered the same temptations that we suffered. All the temptations that you see, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, he suffered all of that stuff. He also was tempted just like us, but he didn't give in to it, he overcame his point. Okay, come on. To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. All 12, because we all sin. Read. For in that, he himself had suffered being tempted. Mm -hmm. He is able to succor them that are tempted. You see what he's saying? He says, for in that, he himself has, he says, he himself has suffered being tempted. Meaning he was tempted just like us. That's what he's telling you right there. He also was tempted just like us. That's why he was a merciful and faithful high. That's why he is a merciful and what? And faithful high priest. 
because he went through the same stuff that we went through. You understand? So that's why he's able to comfort us because he's been through what we went through. All the temptations, the trials that we're struggling with, he also went through them. He also, but he also showed us that listen, you can overcome these things. You can overcome them because he overcame. You understand? So we can do the same thing that he did. Give me that in First Peter two twenty one. First Peter chapter two verse twenty one. Go ahead. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. You see that thing. So Christ, he was what? He left us an example. He says, Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Go ahead. Who did no sin? Mm -hmm. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Neither was bitterness, envy, or hatred found in his mouth. You understand? So what did he do? He prepared his soul for temptation because Guess what? What's the next verse? I'm gonna give an example of that. Read on. Let's finish this. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. You see that thing? When he was reviled, he says he reviled not again. When the when people were trying to um to provoke him, he didn't provoke. He didn't what? He didn't retaliate or respond in a violent way. That's what he's saying. He says reviled not uh, not again. Why? Because remember, um, Christ. All that. Give me the book of Luke, folks, because I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with this not today, but this week, Lord's will. Luke four verse one. Luke chapter four verse one. Come on. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, mm -hmm. being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Read verse 1 again. Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and Read. was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Come on. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. Stop right there. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. So Satan, the spiritual demon Satan, was tempting Christ. 40 days and 40 nights. Go ahead. And in those days, he did eat nothing. You see that he was fasting, which I'm going to deal with the next day, Lord's will. You understand? He says, being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days, he did eat nothing. Come on. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. You see that? When he was done fasting, he says, that's when he was hungry. Because during the time of the fast, what was he doing? He was eating and feeding on spiritual food, which is the laws of God, preparing his soul for temptation. And while he was doing that, Satan was still tempting him while he was preparing his, himself for temptation. The greatest trial that he was going to have to die for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's some heavy stuff right there. You understand? So what's happening here is the devil is tempting Christ and, and tempting him, like we read in Hebrews 2, verse 18. Okay, come on. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. You see that thing? If you are the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. I tell you, you are hungry. I tell you, fasting. You know, you have never eaten, you have not eaten anything yet. So, what, uh, what does that go into? Satan goes, Satan enters your mind. You understand? So, notice when you are fasting, all of a sudden, um, you crave food, you want to eat, you want to drink, but I'm not a normal circumstance. This that hardly ever happens to you. But be, because you're deciding, you know what, I want to fast now, I want to get my mind right, I want to crucify this flesh, excuse me, that the spiritual man can survive. Guess what? Now you start to have those thoughts now while you are fasting because now that Satan are taking you. Satan will tell you, ah, you know, you're not going to survive. You know, it's too hard. Two days fast. Are you sure? You know, it's hot. Is this that Satan? You understand? No, but there's just naked women everywhere. 
Our sisters are just not naked. I can't control myself. That's Satan. That is Satan speaking. The Lord is telling you all things are possible with him. See, if you don't believe that, you don't believe, you don't believe that you can overcome through whatever it is that you deal with. You understand? Read verse 13. Come on. Luke chapter 4, verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. You see that thing? He departed from Christ from, for a season. Likewise, Satan is not going to go forever. He leaves and he comes back. He leaves and he comes back. Why? Because his job is to destroy. Especially now if you're saying you want to come into the truth, you want to serve the Lord. That's when now, now you also say, Satan, now I'm going in, I want to go into the ring to fight. So don't be complacent. You understand? You can't be complacent. That's why it says daily. You must keep your mind occupied with the laws of God. Listen to scriptures. You know how many classes that we've uploaded on, on SoundCloud? So many. And you can download for yourself for offline um, you know, use where you can play it on your device and all that. Many of you don't do that. Some of you do that, but the majority don't do that. So that's why every, every week, some of you every week, you just sing. Every week you find yourself in the midst of sin. Why? Because you think you got it. That's why I said, take heed lest you fall. And you are going to fall. It's not a matter of if or me. Okay? Now, watch this. So, as part of you overcoming, you need to be able to see what happened in the past or our forefathers did in order for them to overcome. I'll give an example. Okay, give me Romans 15 verse 4. Romans 15 verse 4. Let's read that. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the comfort of the scriptures, that's where we, our hope is found. The thing on the things that are written for time. Romans chapter 16 now. Okay, read verse 26. No, Romans 16, verse 26. Romans chapter 16, verse 26. Come on. But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. You see what he's saying? He says, but now is made manifest, that means the mysteries of God, by the scriptures of the prophets. Things were written aforetime by the scriptures of the prophets. We are able to have hope. Now, some of you, you're dealing with, you're struggling with, with, with lust, meaning sexual lust, fornication and all that. I'm going to show you our forefather how he dealt with it. Get Genesis real quick. Genesis chapter 39, verse 6. Come on. Genesis chapter 39, verse 6. Read. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hands. Mm -hmm. And he knew not all he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. So Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Was good looking brother, well favored by Pharaoh. Watch this. Come on. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, Lie with me. You see that thing? So this is Pharaoh's wife. He's lusting up to our forefather jo Joseph. He says, the, the, the wife laid eyes on our forefather Joseph. You understand? And you see what she said? He says, Have sex with me. Sleep with me. Go ahead. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master watches not what is with me in the house. Go ahead. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. Ray, meaning what? Pharaoh has entrusted the kingdom, um, the affairs of the kingdom to Joseph. Okay, go ahead. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee. Right. Because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So what was the sin? Fornication. Adultery. So that's what he's talking about. So our forefather Joseph understood that, that if I sleep with you, 
then I'm going to commit this great wickedness and sin against God. Okay, come on. And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. Read that verse again, verse 10. Genesis chapter 39, verse 10. Read. And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. You see what it's saying? It says, she spake to Joseph day by day. Remember what the apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 31. He says, I die daily. So daily, guess what? You're going to be tried. This woman was talking to her forefather Joseph every single day, wanting him to sleep with her. Go ahead. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went in. You know what? Watch this. You know verse 10. Read verse 10 again. Genesis chapter 39 verse 10. Go ahead. And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her, to lie by her, or to be with her. You see that part right there, it says, he hearkened not unto her, to lie by her, or to be with him. Meaning what? She was even going as far as to just sleep next to him. You understand? To be and, or to be with her. Joseph was like, no, I'm not allowed, I don't want that. Go ahead. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. You see what, you see what she did? She told all the men to go out. Remember, she is, I mean, she's, 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 she's the queen. But she managed to get everybody, in the, everybody out of the house so that she and Joseph can be by themselves. That's what she did. This Ashi Hamite. Go ahead. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. You see what he did? He ran. That's how our Father Joseph dealt with the lust. The woman that was pestering him on his daily basis every day, you understand, pestering him. Joseph, our forefather, he ran. Because he knew that this woman eventually is going to work. He's going to want to do this thing for real and things will go bad. So Joseph made a run for it. That's how we must look at it. That's what we must do. I'm just giving an example here of our forefathers that dealt with lust. I mean, the reason I'm dealing with it just for now is because that's one of the biggest problems in Israel, sexual lust. And I'm, that goes for you sisters as well. Because you sisters also, you're also dealing with sexual lust. So guess what? The, the, our forefather Joseph is a perfect example. He ran. Give me that in Sarah 21, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 21, verse 1. Mm -hmm. My son, hast thou sinned? Do so no more, but ask pardon for thy former sins. He says we must ask forgiveness for our former sins because we've broken the laws of God. Go ahead. Flee from sin. As from the face of a serpent. You see what he's saying? He says, run away from sin as though you run from the face, the face of a serpent. Meaning what? A snake. Imagine you sitting there right now by your chair. Right now. And a huge black mamba just lands on your neck. What you going to do? You're going to sit there and brush it? <laughs> You're not going to sit there and be brushing it and giving it a name. You know, you pet lovers. Hmm? You're not going to sit there and give it a name. You understand? You're going to jump up. Listen, you might even fall out the window. That's how the most High God says we must look at sin. We must look at it like that. That's how we run. He says you must run from sin as though you're running from the face of a serpent. Go ahead. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. If you come too close to that serpent, it's going to bite you. Go ahead. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion, hmm. slaying the souls of men. You see, the objective of the serpent is to slay the souls of men. That's the point. That's the objective of the serpent. This serpent also goes into the, the it goes into the, this serpent goes into the spiritual demon status. It also goes into his children here on earth. Is a flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. 
because the serpent began Eve to slay the souls of men. Who's which men? Adam through his wife. So here it says that the, 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 the objective of the serpent is to destroy the souls of men. Understand it. So that's what we read here. So the most High God says, you see what Joseph, our forefather, did? He ran. That's exactly what, what we just read here. As if he was running from what? The face of the serpent, the face of the poisonous snake. That's what he did. You understand? So that's a good example to follow. If your vibe is women, you dealing with struggling with big booty women. Because I told you, brothers, by the way, let me put it out there now. I told you, brothers, before I said, right now, we see there's a lot of you in the camp now. Guess what? As soon as the day when the most I start to bring sisters in the truth, you're going to see men, brothers are going to get activated. You're really going to see how men behave when more sisters start to come in. Already there's another sister that has joined us now. You understand? She's attending classes just as today she's in that head. She's attending classes. Mm -hmm. Guess what? One or two of you are already activated by the system. You can't make this stuff up. And I said it many, many Sabbaths back. I said, some of you, you are going to be activated by the sister that's coming, by new sisters that are going to come in. Already, I'm already seeing it. You understand? Some brothers are already chatting with the sister on WhatsApp. You cannot make this case up. Hmm. Oh, yes, yeah. Don't think I'm not aware. I'm fully aware of the stuff that you niggas are doing. Niggas. I told you. And guess what? The sister said it, she's going to be joining us when we go out as a congregation. You're going to see Negroes being activated. I'm telling you. Thou art a prophet. <laughs> Man, you can make this stuff up. You see how quiet it is, sister? Mm -hmm. It's very quiet up in here. Hello? <laughs> Man, you can't make this up. <laughs> you cannot make this up. Yo. <laughs> I told you, I said, what is the asset you And I told you, brothers, listen, some of you men, sisters are not in yet. When they come in, you're going to see brothers are going to be activated already. One or two, I saw one brother at camp already was activated. Another brother is having, he's talking to the sister. On WhatsApp, we give you. You're not supposed to be doing that. You understand? You know who you are. Guess what? I'm telling you. You brothers, you're not preparing yourself for temptation. Guess what? Some of these, these sisters, new sisters coming into this truth. Let me tell you, brothers. Give me Proverbs. You know what I want, right? You know, I love this chapter. Because Proverbs 7, guess what? Hmm. Proverbs chapter 7. Read verse 1. He's going to read it down. I'm going to show you something. Because I told you, I said, brothers are going to be activated by the sister. Two of them have already been activated. You understand? Watch this. Proverbs 7 verse 1. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 1. Go ahead. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Read. Keep my commandments and live. Mm -hmm. And my law is the apple of thine eye. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, my son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and lay. Because God's laws will give you life, will protect you from the what? Will protect you from the, the strange woman whose job is to slay the souls of men. Keep going. Bind them upon thy fingers. Mm -hmm. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Remember, we are a class called the lips of a strange woman. You brothers that you know who you are, that you're already activated by that sister, you better go back and watch that class. Keep going. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, mm -hmm. and call understanding thy king's woman. You see that? The Lord is telling you what you must do. He says, say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy king's woman. Meaning what? Wisdom must be your spouse. Okay, go ahead. That they may keep thee from the strange woman. You see that thing? The job of this wisdom, that's what we read from verse 1 to verse 4. It, that it says that they, what is the they? The commandments, the laws, the words of the Lord's mouth. It says they're going to keep you away from the strange woman. Come on. 
from the stranger which flattered with her words. You see that thing from the strange woman which flattered with her words. Because guess what? She's going to be friendly to you when you think, oh, I'm the best thing that has ever happened to you. It's nice place. No, that's Satan. Because that's your vice. That's what's in you. The Lord said, no problem. I'm going to send somebody to activate that thing. You understand? Go ahead. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement. He says, I'm looking through the window. What am I seeing? Watch this. Go ahead. And beheld among the simple ones. Among the what? Among the simple ones. Already, the simple ones have already been activated. The simple ones have been activated already. Go ahead. I descend among the youth, a young man void of understanding. You see that thing? The simple ones, they are void of understanding. You understand? It's, it's always young men that are still filled with youthful lust. Guess what's going to happen? Go ahead. Passing through the street near her corner, and he went away to her house. That's exactly what some of you are going to do. Some of you, you are going to go straight away to this with the, with the, the sister's house. You're going to be doing that because what? You don't follow counsel. you horny. You understand? You're just looking for women to do stuff to you. You're just looking for, see, you are a test bucket. Mm, you thirsty. So now, because the women also, the sisters coming in, they are thirsty as well. Guess what's going to happen? Here's what, she, here's what she will do. Keep going. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night, mm. and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. And of heart. So now, but remember, when they come into the truth, you're going to say you must wear a beautiful long dress, must not be see-through, must not tighten you. Okay, all oh, crazy. Then it says what? But this woman, it says she's subtle of heart. Yes, yeah, she's going to be wearing a long dress with fringes and a bottle of blue head wrap and all that. But guess what? Spiritually, she's dressed like this. A woman with the attire of an heart. Spiritually, that's how she's dressed because that's how you see her. Spiritually, you see her like that with the attire of an harlot, like you see our sisters in the world that are dressed promiscuously. Yes, that's how you want to see her because that's what you your spirit. You understand? Go ahead. She is loud and stubborn. What you don't realize is that, guess what? She's got a big booty and all that. The bigger the butt, the bigger the mouth. He says she's loud and stubborn. Go ahead. Her feet are by not in her house. Because guess what? When she's tired of you, she's going to go and go and look for another, another victim to destroy. But guess what? I know some of you are not going to listen to the council. You're going to think leadership is crazy. You don't know what he's talking about. You know, here's the kicker. Leadership is jealous of you. You can't make this up. <laughs> listen, read the verse again, verse 11. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 7, verse 11. Go ahead. She is loud and stubborn. Uh, her feet abide not in her house. Her feet abide not in her house. She's going to destroy you. Because her job is to slay the souls of men. You understand? She will destroy you. Watch this. Jump down to verse 21. Mm -hmm. Verse 21. With her much first speech, she caused him to yield. You see that thing? She's going to cause you to yield. You understand? She's going to do that thing. Watch the space, I'm telling you. I've, I've mentioned it earlier before. It's this new sister even came into the truth. Now there's one in the truth now. A new sister. I told you, some of you brothers, you're still gullible. You're still filled with youthful lust. New sisters coming in. Guess what? You just stay. You stay. And you listen. The sisters stay. These sisters coming in also, they are just as thirsty just as you. Because why? The sister still needs to get her mind right. You also still need to get your mind right. But because you're not going to listen to counsel, you're going to do whatever the hell you want, here's what will she will do to you. Read verse 21 again. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 21. Mm -hmm. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He forced him. Hmm. Go ahead. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter. You see that thing? You're just going to be like a cow going to the, to the slaughter. A cow that is going to be slaughtered. Go ahead. 
or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Because you are like a fool to the correction of stocks. We are with Lachpan. She's going to devour you. Go ahead. Till a dart strike through his liver. You see that thing? That dart that is going to strike through your liver, guess what that is? That can be a gun, a knife, a kettle. Because you don't know how she is when she's upset, when she's angry. Because when you just look, you look the containment, you look at the container, you don't know what's inside. You see that? It's a till a dart strike him through his liver, disease. Go ahead. As the bird hasted to the snare, mm -hmm. and knoweth not that it is for his life. Meaning what? You're going to die if you don't stop. That's what the Lord is telling you right there. He says, what? That's why I told you, man, make sure you prepare yourself for temptation because some of you, you're only going to start to see what's in you when more sisters start to come into the truth. Then you start to realize, hey, I didn't know I had the spirit. I didn't know I had the spirit. I didn't know I was like this and so on and so forth. You're going to start to see that. Same goes for the sisters as well. When you more brothers come coming are coming into the truth, some of you, you are also going to watch. You're going to start to see. Certain things will start to be active in you. Because guess what? You never dealt with it before it was activated because you know what? You were spending too much time on dumb stuff. Now you have to hit the ground running. You understand? Jump down to verse, verse 26. Read 26 and 27. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 26. Mm -hmm. For she had cast down many wounded. You see what it's saying? It says, Many, many have been cast down. And wounded by this woman. Go ahead. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Many strong men have been put to death by this woman. Read. Her house is the way to hell. Her house is the way to hell. Meaning death. Read. Going down to the chambers of death. Hmm. Going down to the chambers of death. Some of you men, you don't realize or listen. One thing you need to understand sisters coming in, stay away from the sister. The hell is this? Sisters are coming in, they are sick, they are vulnerable. You understand? They are broken. Their mind is not right yet. They are coming here to heal. You understand? To be taught, to be groomed, so that they can grow, have, not have a low self-esteem and so on, things of that nature, but to be groomed so they can be prepared for what? For marriage. Some brothers coming in, they are broken. They are still attached to their mothers. You understand? They are mama's baby boy. Okay? They've got anger issues. You sisters, because you are thirsty, you just want to jump at the, at the brother because he's, he, he's tall. He's, got, he's, got, uh, he's wearing size 12. But the mind is empty. It's just full of water. But you don't think about that stuff. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs. Um, Proverbs chapter 15, uh, Proverbs chapter 15 and verse, uh, read verse 13, Proverbs 15 verse 13. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 13. Come on. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. Read. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. You see that thing, by the sorrow of the heart, meaning the sorrow of the mind. This is mental what? Mental hang up. Sisters coming in, they've got mental hang-ups. It says, what? Their spirit is broken. It's because her spirit is broken. Sisters coming in, their spirits are broken. Brothers coming in, their minds are not right. You have to wait. Give them time for them to grow and develop in this truth. Proverbs chapter 17. Read verse 22. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Read. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Mm-hmm. But a broken spirit tries the bones. You see that thing? But a broken spirit will destroy you. It dries the bone. The bone goes into your mind. So some of you, you have low self-esteem issues. I'm talking about both men and women. You need to give yourself time to grow and develop in this truth. You understand? So likewise, new sisters coming in that are finding you in this truth, they are even more broken. They are more broken up. Their mind is not right. They need time. So the, the spirit of the Lord can be in them. The spirit of the Lord can change them. So they can what? They can get their minds right and they have what? Have sense. Right now, it's too early. And me, on the other hand, me, I'm like a savant. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to see these things that will correct it. I'm going to deal with it. 
Okay, some of you will listen, some of you will not. Understand it. And with that, I'm going to end the class right there. Okay, all praise to the Lord. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, to bread. And when he had given thanks, he prayed it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. Oh, praise the Lord, Lord our God. Oh, praises. Oh, praise the Lord, Oh, praise